Okay guys, I'm at Shia Mountain State Park and in a few hours here there's a blizzard coming in. You can probably barely hear me. The wind right now is probably 20 miles an hour but it's going to get up to gusts of 80 and probably 4 to 6 inches of snow. So my slide is in, everything's inside, I've got food and water and I'm going to take you guys with me while I ride through this storm. Hey guys, it's Robin. The sun has just come up. It's about 7.30 here in Colorado Springs. Out my window, it's like a freezing rain. The wind is kicking up a little bit, but I know the worst of it is starting in about two and a half hours. They call it like a bomb apocalypse a bomb apocalypse or a bomb again. I guess there's something about the air pressure that's happening today that makes this a perfect storm for wind and snow. So of course, if you're in high winds, you want to try and get some kind of cover. That's why I'm down here in this lower spot. And you want to face into the wind like I am right now. Hopefully the wind doesn't change, but on this mountain it changes all the time. But when the ranger came by yesterday, I have a borrowed car out here um, that I was borrowing while I was in town. I'm using it as my tow car here. And the guy came and said for the tow car and for the RV that when the winds come to crack the windows on both sides just a little bit, even though it's a blizzard, otherwise the windows will blow out. And the boy is coming over here. Um, he's a little freaked out right now. Come here, buddy. Want to say hi to the people? Yeah, he, um, you know, he's a champ. He does great. But... The wind, I mean, obviously, and all the shaking does freak him out. They say this is going to be the worst blizzard to hit Colorado in 20 years. I am just on the cusp of where it's going to be really bad and not so bad. So, fingers crossed, I don't get hit too bad, and nobody in here that is with me has any problems like being blown over, and yours truly included. So, let's see what happens. You know, I would never ride out a storm like this if I didn't absolutely have to, but as you guys know, I raced here to be with my mom because she had a, a critical medical issue happening. I mean, I could barely get here. The wind was so bad. And then once I was here, there was no leaving. The storm was coming in. I'm here and I'm happy to be here. And I think it's going to be just fine. Right? So this is me. And here's the blizzard warning. It's 44 right now, but it's going to start raining here in a little bit. And then the temperatures are going to plummet. Let's see what um, I'm looking at. Whew, snaky. And uh, ooh, Thursday, it's going to be 4 degrees, you guys. Do you see that? Man, I'm really hoping to get out of here Monday. But I have to go over a mountain pass no matter what I do. So for right now, all I'm going to do is concentrate on writing this out because this is not going to be fun. It's about 11 o'clock here, and now is when it's going to get really bad. It is definitely blowing, and I am shaking, and uh, it's a blizzard. <laughs> I think right now it's about 40 miles an hour, the wind, but it's going to be getting up, so uh, fingers crossed everything's going to be okay, and everyone in here is going to be okay. <sighs> okay, guys, it's getting bad in here. Uh, I've been watching the news coverage. I still have a TV, which is good. I-25 is a major highway here, and it's closed from Colorado Springs, where I am, all the way to Longmont and almost to the Kansas border, which is hours of the highway. There are accidents everywhere, and where I am, there is thunder snow. It's not good. It looks like I'm going to hit some wind in the 90s. Whew. Holy cow, I almost couldn't shut the door to get back in here. Oh, so they're moving RVs that are facing the wrong direction because there's danger of them blowing over. And the highway is closed. I can't believe I just saw another RV pulling in here. I bet they're really happy to be off the road, but you guys, I almost couldn't get the door open or shut. It is no joke out there, and I'm going to crank the heat in here, even if I have to put on shorts and a tank top, because I think we might lose power. I talked to my neighbors. They had a terrible time on the highway. 
it is a mess out there and um, right now the TV stations are knocked out and there are a lot of people in town that don't have any power. I wasn't able to talk to my mom that lives in Colorado Springs on her home phone. Um, so right now I'm heating it up in here and trying to get all my devices charged. It's going to be four degrees tomorrow and I'm a little bit worried about freezing because I think I might lose my electric power, but I do have a generator. Um, but my tank heaters work on electric. So, uh, by the way, if you guys are ever stuck in anything like this, one thing I do want to tell you, um, just from my insurance experience that they mentioned on the news, I think it's super important. If you are trapped in a storm like this, <clears throat> like an RV just sitting, make sure that your tailpipe doesn't get clogged because you can get carbon monoxide. Oh! Oh, shh. Carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh shit, you guys. I might blow over. So anyway, I was saying, if you're ever trapped uh, in a snowstorm and you're running your heat in your car or your RV, you have to get out once in a while and make sure that your tailpipe is not clogged with snow because you can get carbon monoxide poisoning. And I, I uh, had a couple of clients that died that way when I was in insurance. Oh my gosh, you guys. See how it starts to turn purple? That's around 2 p.m. today. That's when the wind speeds get up over 75. So that's going to be super fun. Ooh, that's not good, you guys. Um, it's actually going to be turning pink, which means the speed is getting up over 95 here this afternoon. So keep your fingers crossed for me and everybody else that's here. Wow. Oh my god. So seriously, I can... F ah! My right tires are being lifted up off the ground. My Like my right back tire. And then I get dropped back down and then I rock. You guys, I can't get the radar up anymore. I know this isn't the worst of it. It's going to get worse for two more hours and it's not stopping until tomorrow morning. I'm going to stop for a sec, which is usually bad. You guys, I'm freaked out a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. I would never be here in March. March is a terrible time to be in Colorado in an RV. I asked my mom why she couldn't get sick in the summer. <laughs> she said, sorry, honey. Oh, sh uh -huh. oh. Okay. There's a little tiny bird taking cover in that little hole over there. <laughs> hey, buddy. Poor guy. Oh. Yeah. Oh! Oh, shit! It's all fun and games until somebody gets blown over, right? Oh my god. Oh yeah, there's definitely some thunder snow happening. Um, there's lightning outside. Like big flashes of light. Shit. So executive decision, I'm actually going to pack up a bag and jump in the car that I have out here that's borrowed and just drive a couple of blocks up to the visitor center to ride out the next three hours because there is some danger that I could flip. I am being lifted up off the ground. 
So I'm going to keep the heat running in here. I think the boy's going to be okay. Uh, but just, you know, better safe than sorry. So I have gotten in my little tow car here. Thanks, George, for letting me borrow your car. So I am headed over to the visitor center. There was one a block from me, and it's closed. I'm literally hiding out in the men's bathroom at Cheyenne Mountain State Park. So here's what happened. I was being lifted off the ground, so I called the ranger station and I said, hey, things are getting pretty nasty out here. Uh, is this about the wind speed where you see RVs flip? And they said, yeah. They said, if you feel better, just come down to the visitor center and hang out. It's open till four. Well, I looked at the satellite and the wind was gonna get worse until four and then it was getting better. And I thought, you know, there's a fireplace there. Just grab your stuff. Just I've got a car, it's right, up the, it's right up the road. At least there was a visitor center right up the road. So I opened up the door to my RV to get in the car and my RV door blew backwards and broke. And um, I almost couldn't get it shut, both hands sliding backwards on the ice. I got the door shut, there was a faint click. I hope it's shut right now. Um, I couldn't see it after that. I literally could not see the door, I couldn't see the RV. I jumped in the car and I drove up to the visitor center and it was closed. I thought somebody else came in here. And I was sliding all over the place and I thought this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. So I turned around to come back up to this bathroom and I parked and I opened up the door to the car that I borrowed and it blew off the hinges. Sorry, George, I'll fix it. Up the hill, like 100 yards from my RV, I can't see it. Um, I'm staying away from the windows because it's like a hurricane outside. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if I see more people in here in a minute because it's, it's bad. Um, I've got about four hours to ride out inside of this bathroom before I can go back to my RV. And I hope the door's shut and I hope the boy's okay. I have no idea if my RV is still standing, if my door is wide open, but I'll tell you guys, it sounds like there's a train coming. So I had to show you guys what I just saw in the toilet stall. Um, this is a brick building, a solid brick building, but I wanna show you guys what the water in the toilet looks like. And this is how much the wind is going inside of this brick building. This water inside the toilet is shaking like that just to give you guys an idea of how windy it is. Well you guys, I'm exhausted. I made it back to my rig after hiding out in that bathroom. It finally got up to the highest winds and um, my rig hadn't flipped over. I could see it down the hill, but I will tell you guys that my back tires moved at least a foot. I still can't see it because of the whiteout. But when I pulled into my spot, I was straight. Now the front of my rig is straight, but the wheels are turned and my back end moved at least a foot, maybe two feet on the ice, which isn't actually a surprise because when I tried to leave that bathroom shelter, um, I was literally pushed standing up on the ice where I was propelled forward. And then I had to take shelter on the side of the building before I could make it to the car. And I'm sorry to say that the car that I borrowed, the door is dented because when I opened the door, a gust of wind hit it and the door opened so quickly that the door actually bent. And there was a broken piece inside my RV door when it caught a gust of wind and so it didn't shut all the way when I left and I had um, snow in here because it was open about half an inch. It's still 75 mile an hour gusts here tonight. But at this point, I'm so tired. I'm like, okay, flip me. <laughs> I'm exhausted. But I'm lucky I still have power here. I do have a hookup. Um, a lot of the places up here don't have power. There are 1,100 stranded cars where I am in Colorado Springs. I saw some local news coverage. It looked like the apocalypse had hit. It was just cars everywhere. I guess people didn't see the news that the storm was coming. And uh, no drivers. So they can't plow the roads because it's full of cars and the workers can't get the power fixed because they can't climb up the poles to fix it. Yeah, I'm ready to get out of here and get back to some better weather. I would never in a million years 
do Colorado in March in an RV. Um, but I guess this bomb cyclone hit eight states. In happier news, uh, Kahlua, check. Coffee, check. And pretty soon there will be some whipped cream on this bad boy. Cold weather doesn't always suck. Oh, yeah. This doesn't all suck. <laughs> yeah. I survived, you guys, and everything is good. I did have some damage. A mobile guy had to come out and reseal my roof around my solar panels because the sealant lifted up and I had a leak. And a couple of my outdoor bins, because of the wind, the hinges had a problem. I fixed them. A part of my door broke a little bit, no big deal. I was able to fix that as well. And to answer some questions I know I'm going to get, no, I couldn't stay at my mom's. Uh, her neighborhood does not allow it. I needed a hookup so that I could use the tank heaters because it was getting down so low in temperature. No, Doug was not with me. He couldn't get up because the highway was closed and it was actually closed for two days. I am glad that I bailed and went uh, and spent some time in the bathroom uh, because there was a semi right down the hill that blew over and um, I definitely moved about three feet. My front tires were in the same spot but turned and the back of my rig had moved about three feet. The car that I borrowed, the door blew backwards and the actual metal hinges were half pried off the frame of the car. So I have to get that fixed. All in all, it's okay. Everybody here was okay, and I'm okay. I have no idea where I'm going because uh, the weather, as you can see, changes here like every 20 minutes, and I have to find a window to get over a mountain pass. But wherever I go, I'll take you guys with me. Thank you, as always, for watching the videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Everybody have happy travels out there, and be free.